Welcome to College Football Live, presented by Dr. Pepper. The SEC Championship is the greatest environment maybe in all of football. Our goal is to beat Georgia and win the SEC. We've earned our way into it. What's important is winning inside of it. To win this conference is a huge deal. You're the Big Ten champions and that's saying a lot. It's not an accident that we're going. We're going to go try to win the game. I think when you've won 27 in a row, you better have some fuel. We are fired up for the Thursday edition of College Football Live. Matt Schick, Jonathan Vilma, and Emmanuel Lancho. Two of the three guys on your screen help their teams win conference championships. The other person, <laughs> watch those games on television. We will all be watching Ocho. on television this weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, we're already, we're already fired. We're Time started. now for the Wendy's Wooden Watch, <laughs> Wendy's Weekend Watch. Each of the Power Five leagues will crown a champion this weekend, beginning Friday night when fifth Frank Utah faces number 13 Oregon on ABC Saturday. It's Oklahoma, Baylor, LSU, Georgia, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Clemson, Virginia. Now, this is the final chance for teams to leave a lasting impression on the committee, a committee that will be watching these games together. Some need to win, some need to win with style. Acho, which team needs the most style points? It is very simple. Utah, they have to win in a dominant, dominant fashion. There's been so much noise all this week about, well, is Utah getting knocked because they're not a prominent, nationally renowned program? Shut all the haters up. Shut all the critics up. Go out there, play against the one legit ranked team you'll see all season, and dominate that ball game, and Utah will be in the playoffs. It's simple as that. Man, Acho, stop it. Utah doesn't have to go out and dominate against Oregon. We're talking about ranked versus ranked. Every conference championship game is ranked versus ranked. So if Utah goes out there and they beat a ranked opponent, that is just as good as any time any other team beat a ranked opponent. There's no reason why the number five team in the nation has to worry about beating Oregon, a ranked team, in a dominant fashion to get into the Here, playoffs. Here's why I disagree with you, my guy. I disagree with you because Utah hasn't seen a ranked opponent all season. Well, they saw one, Arizona State, who I think currently has five losses. That's how they finished the season. So not all ranked opponents are created equal, but Utah doesn't have the, they don't have the schedule to sit here and say, oh, we can just win barely because this is their ranked opponent test. They have to show up. Remember, JV, Oklahoma beat Baylor could beat Baylor again, could beat Oklahoma State. Three ranked opponents in four weeks. What's Utah done for you, bro? Okay, well, tell me this. How good is a victory for Oklahoma over Baylor when they already beat Baylor? By the way, they were down to Baylor 28-3, to came back and won that game. So if they beat Baylor by 7 points, 14 points, what does that tell us? Absolutely nothing. Because back then when they were down 28-3, they roared back with 28-31 unanswered points. So that victory is not going to mean anything to me while I see Utah beating Bale, uh, excuse me, Oregon with a Justin Herbert and with a better team. I see that as a significant hey, victory. Um I'm on JV's side on this odd show. The committee already likes Utah. Oklahoma already owns the resume advantage in terms of wins over teams currently ranked in the committee's top 25. So how is one more win over a ranked team going to sway it when Utah will add a ranked win? Because this whole game, this whole college football playoff conversation all stems and looms on wins versus ranked teams. One could be the difference. One could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And let's not forget, don't sleep on Baylor in all of this. Because remember, Baylor's the team that can have the chance to really boost its resume with that win. But you're, you're talking about the facts, Chick, of like, you know, it's, it's one win versus a ranked team or JV, a team they've already beat. Bro, that's what this is all about. Who have you beat? And what ranked teams have you beat? I'll tell you, it's the, it's the Oklahoma stretch with Kansas State, TCU, Iowa State coming from behind against Baylor. That stretch where they weren't passing the eye test. We'll see if Oklahoma comes back uh, to regret that. Uh, speaking of which, time now for our Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game preview. Got some explosive offenses. Oklahoma, fifth in points per game. The only team in the country with 100 explosive plays. That's plays 20 yards or more on offense. Baylor, plus 12 in turnover differential. That's fifth in the FBS. OU is minus five. That's 97 in the FBS. OU is also minus nine, as in the point spread. Time for a little too high or too low. According to Caesars, Oklahoma favored by nine. Is that number too high or too low, JV? 
man, that's too high. You're talking about an Oklahoma team that should have lost, had every reason to lose against Baylor. Credits to Oklahoma and the offense and the defense finally stepping up. But there's no way you're going to tell me that I'm going to be confident in Oklahoma going into this game, especially, Schick, when you just mentioned they have struggled early in these games lately and then have to find their way, claw their way back to a victory. Baylor may hold on and upset Oklahoma. Yeah, I agree with you, JV. That's entirely too high. You're talking about a Baylor team who, above all their star players, has a star coach. And that coach, Matt Rule, is not going to let the Baylor Bears go out there and get blown out or get dominated. Way too high. All right, C.D. Lamb didn't play in that game in Waco. He'll be there uh, on the field this weekend. All right, let's go. Uh, that's a nine-point favorite. Multiply that times three and then some for the ACC championship game. 28-and-a-half-point favorite Clemson over Virginia. Acho, that number too high or too low? Here's my thing, Schick. My degree was not in mathematics, so after things get into the 20s, your boy loses count. Too high, too low? Are we really going to talk about it when you're talking about 28-plus points? I mean, I think UVA tries to stay close for a quarter and a half, but I don't know, JV. You answer the question, man. Uh, it's too high, Acho. And the reason why it's too high is because this is a methodical game for Clemson. Clemson doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. They are stuck at that number three spot unless there's an upset for LSU or upset by, for Ohio State. So you go out, you handle your business, run the football, play good defense like you've done all year. Just ask yep. Trevor Lawrence to make a few throws and you win by two, two scores, three scores max. Hey, it, Clemson's won seven straight by an average of 41 points a game. 41's more than 28 if they oh, keep yeah. it up. I think they'll, they'll have Thanks that for one. telling us after the facts, Shik. Thanks for telling Sorry. us after the facts. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want the facts to get in the way of a good argument there. Uh, let's go to the Big Ten, JV. Ohio State favored by 16 and a half over a team they beat in Wisconsin earlier this year. Too high or too low? It's too high, and I understand the beatdown that Wisconsin took against Ohio State early in the season. I'm watching Ohio State's defense, and they have been a little porous in the run game as of late. And who's, what's the strength of Wisconsin? You're talking about the run game. So now Ohio State has to stack the box for his Jonathan Taylor again. Jack Cohn has played better. He has been able to stretch the field, and if he's able to do that, the game will be closer than 16 points. Yeah, I'm agree with JV again. I'm going to say too high. And, and, and I'm saying too high because Wisconsin's a team that's very they, – they have a lot of toughness, have a lot of heart, have a lot of pride. Now, it didn't do a lot for them in the first matchup because they got beat down and they got bludgeoned and it was on national television. We all saw that. But Jonathan Taylor, he is due for a big game against Ohio State. Hasn't had one in his previous two attempts. Jim Leonard, a defensive coordinator, he's going to dial some things up to try and contain Justin Fields. I think that's 16, 16 and a half, too high. Yeah, it was 38-7 last time, but 10-7 yeah. to start the third quarter. So we'll see if uh, Wisconsin can hang in there a little bit longer. Let's go to the SEC. Uh, LSU favored by upwards of seven points against Georgia. Acho, is that number too high or too low? And that's too low. I think LSU pours it on them. I think they just – defenses can only sustain for so long, gentlemen. That's my thought process. That's my belief. Georgia's up now the offense. Swift, is he 100%? Cager, is he 100%? Pickens, without him for the first half. Jake Fromm can't throw the ball to himself. I think seven's too low. LSU dominates. Yeah, I agree with you, Acho. Seven is too low, and it's really because of one man, Jake Fromm. He has looked like poo who for the past <laughs> three or four games. And like it's that, so Jay bad Jay? when you watch. Yes, it is that bad, guys. Oh, my God. You. When you watch him, you I'm said like, he man, what is going on? Because he's been such a good quarterback for so long, and the last three or four games, it's looked bad so I'm let me let me Jake speak Paul. on it he's not gonna really handle his business i mean <laughs> jv he's not wrong i mean to say he just looked like straight doo-doo is a little aggressive <laughs> yeah, he's not but I, I think jake from he needs more weapons he needs more weapons and jake smell is right when <laughs> i'm watching film on jake from i can smell it so I, it's, okay it's, it's bad, right, man. okay ooh, i think ooh. i think this goes any longer uh this, we're going we're gonna to have to cancel the entire segment. Uh, by the way, Georgia hasn't allowed more than 17 points in regulation all year. Uh, that is far from, from doo-doo. And uh, Utah favored by 6.5 uh, over Oregon. Quickly, uh, too high, too low on Oregon. That's a 6.5-point spread favorite for Utah. JV, quickly. Oh, too, too high. Utah is uh, built... The, the, they're not built that way. They're, they're built to play good defense, run the ball, not to blow teams out. 
And I'm going to disagree. I'm going to say too low. Utah has too much to play for. Too much is on the line. A lot is at stake. They know what they have to do. I think they get it done. All right, so we know what the top three teams need to do. It just means win. Or do they even have to do that? It's LSU. You've got Ohio State there at the one spot, Clemson at the three. Do, do any of you guys see a scenario where either of those top three teams, any of them, can lose this weekend and miss the college football playoff? Acho. Uh, Clemson for sure is in dear danger and I think Dabo used a little hyperbole earlier on in the week when he said oh, everybody's waiting for us to lose he's a little bit right if Clemson loses to UVA everybody will jump on that and say we knew it we knew they weren't that good Clemson does not have the luxury to take a loss I think not all of them have the luxury to take a loss if they don't get blown out. You're talking about overtime loss, loss by three points. Then they're going to say the body of work is at that. Their body of work is at such that they can still be in the playoff. If it's a blowout, though, they never can survive a blowout. Yeah, I think if Oregon beats Utah Friday night, Clemson's locked in, no matter what. Because then you got a one loss, Big 12, and then what? Two loss, Georgia. Yeah to lost Wisconsin yep. if, they, if they were to beat Ohio State. Who, who the heck knows? So uh, we shall see. We think we know who the top three are, but who is that final team, that fourth team? Let's take a look at the one final team vote brought to you by Dr. Pepper. And 36 of the responders are Oklahoma fans with very reliable Wi-Fi, followed by Utah <laughs> with 30%, then Georgia 27%, and then Baylor where 7% of the time they're the final team every time. One by watching College Football Live, presented by Dr. Pepper. Clay Helton will be back next season as USC's head coach. In an interview with Freddie and Fitzsimmons on ESPN Radio, Athletic Director Mike Bone said there was not unanimous support from the base and supporters to make a change. If the comments of former Trojan star Keyshawn Johnson on ESPN Radio are any indication, the support for keeping Clay Helton is anything but unanimous. I am mad as hell. <laughs> and I don't like it. And I feel like the athletic director who came in, Mr. Bonehead, okay? <laughs> Knew that name was coming. Did not do his due diligence at the level that he needed to. When I go back and I look at his track record as an athletic director and every stop that he's ever been at, I, I don't see anybody that makes me jump up and go, okay, he hired that guy. That's the right guy. In Colorado, every coach he hired was a disaster. You look at Cincinnati, Luke Fickle's doing a good job at Cincinnati. But SC's not Cincinnati. They are about to be. Now, if you did not, and I don't know this for a fact, if you did not reach out to some of those other head coaches that are available, that's sitting on their couch, if you didn't, then you've just done this university a disservice because you don't get it. Clearly, you don't get it. You, 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 you're not connected. You haven't been there. You don't, even, you don't understand. Incredible words there from a legendary USC Trojan. Uh, Jonathan Vilma, what do you make of USC's decision to keep Clay Helton? I, I like the decision. I agree with the decision. And I look at, forget the injuries, forget, you know, what happened this past season. I'm looking at the offense and what Clay Helton has done. Clay Helton has taken not one, not two, three quarterbacks and had them all produce at a very high level. He has talent at the receiver position. Running back position is stable. It's not Reggie Bush talent, but it's still good enough. The issues come on the defensive side of the football where they can't stop anybody. So when you look at Clay Helton and his background, it's been offense. And what is he able to do? He was able to put up points with three different quarterbacks. So everything tells me that he knows how to coach. He knows the system works. It's about now getting the defensive side back on par. I like the decision, JV, but I agree with Keyshawn to a degree. If, if this decision came very quickly, and if I'm at USC and USC personnel or USC alumnus, I'm wondering, did you do your research? Did you do your due diligence? Did you call around or did you just make the lazy decision? JV, you are entirely correct. He took not a first, not a second, but a third string quarterback and went and beat a number five currently ranked team. So he had some big time performances this year, but I also wonder, was it Graham Harrell that truly saved that job? Because remember, it's Graham Harrell and that new offense by Graham Harrell with the plethora of receivers that help USC win some of those ball games. 
It's going to be interesting, guys. There is a risk here in recruiting. We are less than two weeks away from the early signing period. They've got 11 commits, none of them in the ESPN 300. None of the top 25 players in the state of California have committed to USC right now. So, again, the risk, we'll see if we're right here in the same exact spot uh, a year from now. But uh, Acho, the contract for Helton runs through 2023. You think he'll make it that far? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. And I, I think that... You, you want to come in and instantly have stability. And if that's why I credit the athletic director and, and the decision that he made is just let me keep things stable. But I saw their, their recruiting classes and then ESPN's top 40. You're talking about USC right now. So that, that's fairly embarrassing. You better hope that you can develop the talent that you do have. Well, you hit it right there on the head, Acho. It's not always about recruiting the top recruiting class. It's also about developing the players. And so far, we've seen yeah. Clay Helton can develop quarterbacks and offense. Now it's the defensive side that needs to pick it up. And Graham Harrell's name is being mentioned as well, maybe being wooed to other schools. So we'll see if they can uh, keep the staff that they have, at least on the offensive side of the ball, intact. Maybe USC fans will, will choose to go surfing this weekend. We'll go channel surfing. Terrible segue. Apologies. Let's go. Conference USA this week, UAB and FAU at FAU Stadium. Battle of the last two champs of the league. Lane Kiffin looking for 10 wins in the conference title for the second time in his third season. Bill Clark, Lane Kiffin, both mentioned for Power 5 jobs. We shall see. In the MAC, Jim McElwain had a Power 5 job. Now the MAC Coach of the Year trying to lead Central Michigan to its first league crown in 10 years. The former Florida coach has a former Tennessee ball and quarterback, Quentin Normandy. They'll face Miami of Ohio on ESPN2. How about the Sun Belt? Noon Eastern on ESPN. App State hosting the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Mountaineers ranked 20th in the playoff poll, looking for their fourth straight title. Head coach Billy Napier done a terrific job with the Raging Cajuns. And how about the Mountain West? Hawaii visiting Boise State. ESPN4 Eastern. Boise State beat Hawaii by 22 earlier this year at home. Broncos just one spot ahead of Cincinnati and two behind Memphis in the playoff rankings. Those two go at it in round two for the American Athletic Conference title. ABC 330 Eastern. Memphis won by 10 last week on the same field. The group of five race for the New York Six Bowl likely coming down to Boise State or the American champ. Up next, seven teams have a spot at the college football playoff. Only four will make it in. Who is it? Our guys dish out the spoilers next. Now a look at a Heisman update brought to you by Nissan. It is LSU's quarterback Joe Burrow. The senior wrapped up his final performance in, at Death Valley by not only playing to the crowd with his jersey name, but also balling out with his fourth consecutive game of 300 passing yards and three touchdowns. We think we know who's going to win this thing, but who has a chance to solidify an invitation to the ceremony and get a front row seat to watch Joe Burrow win his Heisman Trophy. Acho, who is it this weekend? Man, I'm hoping Jonathan Taylor puts a cherry on top of his phenomenal career thus far. Running back for Wisconsin, he's been balling ever since he stepped foot on campus. 31 of his 39 games, he's gone over 100 yards. It is incredible. I think he's 60 plus yards away of having over 6,000 yards on his career. In three years, he'd be the first player to do it. So Jonathan Taylor, go ball out and get yourself to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Oh, Acho, there is one man on the other side of football that does not want Jonathan Taylor to ball. That's Mr. Chase <laughs> Young. And if you remember that Wisconsin game early in the season, that was his coming out party, like literally his coming out party. I have no idea what the offensive game plan was for Chase, Chase Young that day, but it was bad. And he can put, put himself <laughs> right back into that Heisman talk, give him another three, four sack performance, whatever you want, and watch Chase Young. He might steal the Heisman. Nah, Look, he, he won't. The, he won't. JV, he won't. If, he, if he goes crazy, <laughs> like remember, Ndamukong Sue against Texas 09, I had a mm -hmm. front row yep. seat because I was playing in that game. When he balled out in that game and ended up, I think, finished third at the Heisman. If Chase Young has one of those types of games, he got a chance, bro. I'll give it to you. Oof. We'll, we'll see. Maybe. Might be too little. Might be too little. Too late. We'll have that selection show yeah. uh, coming up. That's coming up this weekend on Sunday. The exclusive reveal of the matchups and the Chick Fil A Peach and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl to be played on Saturday, December 28th. Reese and the guys unveiling the New Year's Six Bowl games as well and the final top 25 rankings in the four-hour special. All right, Acho, who's your four if you're on the committee after this weekend? 
I think it's going to go this way. LSU, OSU, Ohio State, baby, Clemson, and I think the Sooners find a way to get it done. All right, oh, no. We got Ohio State 1, LSU 2, Clemson 3, Utah 4. And I'm going to take it a oh. step further. Ohio State is going to beat Utah, and Clemson is going to beat LSU. Whoa, Boom. Whoa, That's whoa, a national whoa. championship. Yeah, yeah, got JV, plenty of shows. Next week. Next week. <laughs> JV's right. Hope you enjoyed our body of work. <laughs>